Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. This episode is going to be a little bit chiller. We're going to try and chill. I don't have a time constraint. Usually when I do this, I have a time constraint because I do this before work these days. I have a good routine, a good system going. And uh, today is a Saturday. Happy Saturday to me. Uh, I am going back to an episode that I skipped I skipped and it's coming up and so I needed to record it and I wanted very specific um, uh, a very specific situation availability to do this episode because there's a certain word and I wanted to have a certain guest on and I wasn't able to make it happen as usual I put out a few uh, tweets or DMS or something and and uh, I get no answer usually and it's fine I, I try two three times it's fine um, I wanted to have somebody on this episode who makes edibles and that's one of the words in this episode and you know this it's it's uh the i'm, I'm talking about specifically the cannabis and edib- edibles the the devil's lettuce edibles i don't know if you would want to eat an edible that was a lettuce i mean i guess it's maybe possible just a lettuce anyway uh I wanted to have somebody who made those because I think it's an important thing to talk about in this day and age as cannab- cannabis legalization is getting more and more. Uh, there's still people who I think don't really uh, think about it or know about it. And I think it's a pretty important thing um, because it's it's really all about freedom and letting people do what they want. And uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of screwed up reasons why uh, people have wanted to stop that and that's frustrating and so you know i i I want to do my part um so people create these things and they're food food that you consume and so personally as a vegan uh not that i'm trying to like put that on people but that's just how i feel about things and i wanted to support that industry more than uh more than not because again that's what i believe so I wanted to get on somebody who makes vegan edibles. I knew somebody through social media because that's the cool thing about social media is that you can actually interact with people uh, in your community uh, from all over the world. And that's pretty cool. So I messaged her. I think she's busy. She didn't see it. That's fine. Uh, so you're just stuck with me today to talk about this, this very silly show podcast thing that I have for some reason decided to do. I know I say that sometimes. It just boggles the mind that this is what I have decided to do because it's a big project but i hope it's uh fun and entertaining for you um so as i said i went back i skipped it didn't happen and uh so this is like this is this has got to air in a few days and i was like i just got to do it i got a saturday and i myself need to uh be in that state of mind for something like this i think this is an episode that deserves it um so i'm not going to get into like my personal usage but you know just for transparency there is something affecting my brain chemically right now and you know i that doesn't that's not how i usually do this show and so it's you know it might be a different sort of feeling i'm also just saying it to you now so you know but um you know i thought it's just a thing to talk about um so we got some words and we're going to talk about the words and because i it's a saturday morning and i have a little bit extra time i'm going to try and be a little bit more chill also because of the state of mind change and I have a blended smoothie that is made with love, which is my favorite of the seasonings. You got, you always get, I get the organic love. <laughs> okay, the first word, I mean, yeah, anyway, the first word, it's pretty obvious that I'm a bit high, isn't it? Is edged, E-D-G-E-D. Edged? I guess, I guess yeah, I could say edged, because it's, uh, there's, the, there's an E-D thing there, that makes sense. Edged or edged? guess it depends on the context. This is an adjective from before the 12th century. Number one, having a specified kind of edge, boundary, or border, or a specified number of edges, as in rough edged. Rough edged. Ooh, your, your personality could be rough edged. You have a specified kind of a rough edge. Uh, edge, border, boundary, we always, that's the thing, that's the thing about molecules and stuff there is no specified edge it's like weird and there's more space than there's not more space than stuff uh but you know in general in this three-dimensional world we have solid edges rough edge the other example is two-edged 
That's the uh, the specified number of edges. That that thing is two two ed- two edges. It has two edges. Number two, my hat. It has two edges. Number two, the synonyms are sharp and cutting, as in an edged. Oh, that's where you would say probably two syllables. Edged, an edged knife. Also, as in an edged remark or an edged remark. That remark cuts like a knife. And it hurts so bad. Okay, what sound effect do we need to make in this episode? Uh, but it was, uh, nothing, nothing, no, no words here uh, exude a sound. So we just have to go, wee. The next word is edge effect. Two words, noun from 1933. The effect of an abrupt transition. Between two quite different adjoining ec- ecological communities on the numbers and kinds of organisms in the marginal habitat. The effect of how that sharp change affects the thing, the group, the area, the ecolo- the marginal habitat uh, edge effect. So wait, are we talking about humans here? Are we talking about animals or is it all the same thing? Um, I'm trying to look at the camera more. I know I, sometimes I'm good at it, but there's a lot. I got to read the stuff that's here. Uh, let's see. An abrupt transition between two quite different, quite different adjoining. These these ecological communities are very different from each other, but they're joining. Hmm. Okay. Wee. The next word is edge grain. Two words with a hyphen. You could also say edge grained. Adjective from 1906. What I should have is like a little paper clip. I do have a paper clip. I lost my other paper clip. I should put that in there so I can like move it down as I go. Okay. The synonym for edge grain is quarter sawn. I don't know what either one of these things are. They seem farm related, I think. Um, just, I think, yesterday was the uh, the first sort of official, it's really second official video episode on this show on YouTube. And it's a very big deal for me. It's been a long time coming to get video in this situation. And I it's going and then, you know, someday maybe we'll, we'll step up a notch, whatever that means. But I hope you're enjoying the video and you're welcome. Okay, that was Edge Grain. Whee! Edge in, two words, transitive verb from 1683. To work in, to, you're working the thing into the ground, you're, you're farming, uh, gardening, you gotta f- work it in. Where was it? To work in, yeah. The synonym is interpolate. How are we supposed to interpolate that information? As in, maybe this will help. Edged in a few remarks. I'm going to interpolate... <laughs> I don't know. Is that the right word here? Interpolate my words into the conversation because I, I need you to know what I have to say. I'm going to work it in. Interpolate. I think of as interpolate as something completely different. And now for something completely different. Um, we'll get to the eyes eventually, I guess. Wee! Edger. Noun from 1591. One that edges. Clearly. Especially a tool used to trim the edge of a lawn along a sidewalk or curb. It doesn't. It's the little thing with the spikes on it, I think, and uh, it just is a fun job. You just go do 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 do, walking down. I'm right on the edge of the grass and the sidewalk, and I'm making my grass all clean and pretty. You what? You don't want it to look messy, do you? Why would you want that? You want to fit in with everybody. Okay, next. Wee. Edge tool, noun from the 14th century. A tool with a sharp cutting edge. Some people's words are their edge tool. Wee! Edgeways, adverb from 1566. It is chiefly British. And uh, yeah, this is definitely one of those phrases. Like, why do you guys say that? Well, I guess it makes sense. Uh, the synonym is sideways, so I guess we say it sideways, and uh, the British people like to say edgeways, because you're going along your edge, what's the side, what depends on the context, I guess, which one makes more sense. We should have both of them. Can we share? Wee! 
Next word is edgewise, adverb from 1677. Number one, the synonym is edgeways. Ah, so we we say edgewise? We say edgewise, they say edgeways, but edgewise is more common in our... Why? I don't know. I don't know. I guess, is it the combination? No, edgeways would be the combination of the other two. Okay, number two, as if by an edge, and the synonym is barely. Oh, we barely made it. It was uh, as if by the edge of the hair of my chinny chin chin. We made it. We crossed the finish line. This is usually used in the phrase, get a word in edgewise. Sideways. You could replace it there if you replace sideways. I got to get my words in sideways. Uh, just going to nudge nudge my way into this conversation and uh, edge in my words edgewise. We Next is edging, noun from 1558, something that forms an edge or border. Something that forms an edge or border is the edging. Maybe it's um, a fence. We uh, Edgy is next. E-D-G-Y. This show is not edgy at all. Adjective from 1775. One, having an edge, and the synonym is sharp. That's an edgy knife. 2A, being on edge. The synonyms are tense and irritable. Oh, yeah, we all get there, don't we? Yeah, we do. 2B, characterized by tension, as in edgy negotiations. Uh, there, yes, we, there's always tensions going on with negotiations. Um, this this episode is fairly timely because of what's going been going on with the uh, the negotiations with all of the strikes. Uh, usually, my episodes are f- way too far recorded, way too far early. Um, but the writer strike just s- supposedly, theoretically, possibly ended. Uh, there was um, oh, there's always strikes going on. Uh, the car people are striking. Oh, this is a fun world we live in. Hopefully the actor strike is ending. Uh, ugh, mm. just, just don't like that people have to go through this stuff. They shouldn't have to. Okay, that's a very edgy conversation. Uh, number three for edgy, having a bold, provocative, or unconventional quality, as in an edgy film. Well, maybe this podcast can be edgy if it's unconventional I don't know how unconventional this really is. Okay, edgily is an adverb, and edginess is a noun. How do you find your edginess? You have a drink from Blended. That's so edgy. No. We E-D-H, also E-T-H, and it's pronounced ev. The, 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 with the hard th ed th. edh well i mean i would probably spell it e d t h ed th, but we don't need the t necessarily noun from 1875 the letter and then it shows a letter which i've seen this it's like a circle it's like an o but then one side goes whoop up well for you it would be that way i guess possibly uh depend, how are we looking at this is it a mirror is it how what's anyway this is my left side, because my shirt's... No, it's not backwards, is it? Whoop. It goes like that, or like that. The point is on the left side. Um, so I guess it's called an edth, and it is used in Old English to represent either or either of the fricatives, th or th, 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 th or th, and in Icelandic and some phonetic alphabets to represent the fric- fricative Th. So some languages it's th or th, and then in Iceland and other ones, uh, it, it's just th. So that's what it represents. It looks like a D. It looks like a lowercase d with a big fat bottom. And uh, I have luckily been to Iceland, and I eventually learned this that this sort of D shaped, or sometimes it's literally printed like a D, I think, um, and it's a th. th. Like th- thingvalier, I think. It oh, sometimes looks like a P, maybe a backwards P also. I could have that wrong. But uh, yeah, it's a th-th sound. So thingvalier, whereas the, it's this 
par- place where the pl- plate tectonic plates, <laughs> the tectonic plates are splitting literally, and it's just this big like cavern, and it's very cool, and you should go if you can, but not everybody can. So eventually, I think you got to put that up at the top of your list when you can go somewhere, because you should go check it out. And <laughs> that was an edge. Where were we going with that? Ed, it's the thing, Valir. That's it was. That's the letter. You see, you see what happens. You lose your track. This is not going to happen all the time. This is a very special episode. We EDI abbreviation for electronic data interchange. Send in interchanging data. I got nothing. We Ed. Ediacaran. That's not at all how I wanted to say that word. Ediacaran. Hmm. Um. I wanted to say Ediacaran. Ed. I did. It's. I don't know how to say it now. Ediacaran. 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 That's how you remember things. Ediacaran. Oh crap. Ediacaran. It. Oh, it's just Ediacara. It's an adjective from 1966. This is being or belonging to an assemblage of extinct multicellular marine organisms of the late Precambrian era, as in Ediacaran fauna. And those are the things that were alive, the, the animals more than the plants. Um, yeah, they're just, they're, and they're extinct because there was the whole, like, Cambrian explosion, and then the pre, pre, I don't remember the order, the Precambrian, and then there was the b- big mass extinctions, and there's five or six of them, and um, that's I guess one of the 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 names of that period, Ediacaran, Ediac, yeah. Uh, Ediacaran is also a noun, and the name comes from Ediacara Hills in South Australia. That's probably where they found a bunch of this stuff from that time period. Otherwise, that would be a silly name. Wee! Here we go with edible adjective from 1594. And you know that it's going to be missing a, a definition that's very important. Um, this is fit or be eaten. <laughs> fit or be... Wait, what? Fit to... It would help if you read the words correctly. I need a magnifying glass. Fit to be eaten. This synonym is eatable. Or edible, able to be eaten. Ah, so yes, this, so this is the adjective, of course. We have to remind ourselves. Uh, this is, you don't want to eat something that's not edible. Unfortunately, some people do that. And they need to uh, figure out that. Because I don't think anybody should be eating straw. That's uh, That doesn't sound fun. And I feel very bad for them. So, fit to be eaten. Edibility is a noun. How much edibility... I hope something has 100% edibility and not a mix because I don't want to be doing that. And the etymology is always important to read. It's from the Latin adere, which means to eat. And there's more at the word eat. Adere, to eat. It is something to eat. You want your edibles to be eaten. We. The next word is, now, I guess I thought that there was a second form of a noun, but there's not. It's just something that can be eaten. Now, that's interesting. Why wouldn't they have a noun here? Don't don't they call things uh, edibles? Like, clearly, these days, we have things, edibles, you can go by. It has a very uh, important, distinct meaning these days when you say it. But before the cannabis edibles became popular... Did we not call things edible or is it just not a big, I don't know. It seems weird that it's not, that's not in here. Um, And then of course there's the thing that we think of, which is it's got some THC or CBD or any of the other uh, three letter things that are in that plant, which are a ton of them. And, uh, and then you ingest it and it makes you feel a different way. And it's, uh, and it's very therapeutic for people. I think that's just the big thing that most people know but don't talk about as much is that uh, it's a very helpful thing. And I feel so strongly about this that it needs to be all over the place, available all over the place. Um, I feel so strongly I was very curious what it felt like. And so, and I know I've mentioned this before, but I have a podcast where 
<coughs> excuse me, I got a thing, where I interview people about what it's like to be high. Because it wasn't something that I had seen, wasn't something that I thought that people were talking about, really. And so I interviewed people. It was supposed to be a visual documentary. And then I turned it into a podcast when I was stuck at home during the pandemic. Good thing I had a project. And um, and then I started doing live interviews. Anyway, it's a whole thing, and it's called When I'm High. And I think it's a fascinating way to learn about people uh, through this plant lens and... That's, I mean, that's one thing. And then just also like talk about all the positive things about it that um, slowly more and more people are realizing. Uh, and of course, I also will shout out a podcast, Great Moments in Weed History. And if you want to, you know, get the real information, that's the place to go first. But if you want some enjoying uh, some, some fun conversations, uh, you can come to my podcast too. But of course, I'm going to promote somebody else's thing before mine. Um, because it's better. <laughs> okay. We The next word is edict. Noun from the 14th century. One, a proclamation having the force of law. It's so, it has so much force behind it. A proclamation having the force of law. It's a, it's a law. Would it, why would it be a proclamation? Why not just call it a law? If it has the force of a law, what's... Why, 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 how else is it different? Just call it a law. It's an edict. Um, I guess there are different levels of those things. Number two, the synonyms are order and command. As in, we held firm to... What? <laughs> we ha- held firm to grandmother's edict. Boy, it's so easy to skip lines when you got this th- thin paper in the text behind it. We held firm to grandmother's edict. And that is a quote from M.F.K. Fisher. What was her edict? She was she had an order and command. She wanted you to do things all the time. So you got to do what grandma says. Edictal, ed- edictal, edictal is an adjective. That's not how I thought that word was going to be said. Edictal, edictal. This is from the Latin verb edicere, or edicere, which means to decree. I decree, and uh, that is from E plus decere or decere, which means to say, to decree, to say, I say. There's more of the word diction. That's what you're saying. It's, my edict is to watch my show <laughs> and other things. We. The next word is edification, noun from the 14th century, an act or process of Edifying. Edification. I don't know what to say about that. We. Edifice. Oh, we got some got some good words here today. Noun from the 14th century. Number one, the synonym is building. Why is this a good word? I don't know. Maybe I thought it was something else. Especially a large or massive structure. An edifice. Just a big old stuff. Lots of stuff is an edifice. Number two, a large abstract structure. Why? Okay, well, it's large, but why abstract? Why why do we call them edifices? As in, holds together the social... Oh, abstract in that way, the thought way. Uh, Holds together the social edifice. That is a quote from R.H. Tawney. R.H. Tawney. So the large... So this is the, the social abstract the idea of society is is an edifice a large holds together by social edifice um okay yeah i guess so i don't talk i'm not that smart to use it that way i have a very limited vocabulary clearly we edify e-d-i-f-y transitive verb from the 14th century number one is archaic so 1a the synonym is build edify you are making a big thing probably hmm i guess it is that the intention the the intention behind the word build is i'm going to build a big thing so i'm going to edify it am i thinking too literally about this 1b the synonym is establish you're creating a a big thing we you hope i guess two to instruct and improve, especially in moral and religious knowledge. 
The synonym is uplift. Also, the synonyms enlighten and inform. I'm going to enlighten you about some things. Instructing and improving, especially in moral. So that's uh, moral and religious knowledge. Um, okay. I mean, I guess that's the whole thing about religion is that it's all about morals. Uh, but you don't necessarily need religion to have good morals. Have the morals you want to have. I would recommend the good ones. But I don't know you. Uh, okay. So the etymology says, this is from lower Latin, edificare, edificare, which means to instruct or improve spiritually. There's a lot of judgment, you know, everybody changes with spiritually. You don't have to improve on it. It doesn't mean you're better, but uh, yeah, instruct or improve spiritually. And then also to erect a house in Latin. That means edificare is to erect a house. So you're building a thing, an edifice. Um, but yeah, it does have this sort of religious, spiritual connotation to it, um, because that's also from Ades, which means temple or house, akin to the Old English ad, which means funeral pyre, and also, just to add in a little bit of extra fun, it's also from the Latin aistas, which means summer. I guess that's when the house building happens in the summer. Okay, edify Ed, an edifice it's a big thing but the the important part about it that they're not I, yeah i guess they sort of get at a little bit is it's it's a religious and spiritual thing abstract idea that there's it, there's meaning attached to this thing this big structure you can't just randomly say any big structure is an edifice it's got to have some religious meaning to it i guess or spiritual or whatever that is okay we Okay, last word, last word, and it's a good one for me um, because it's all about me. This is the word edit, and we have two forms. Form number one is a transitive verb. Transitive verb from 1791. 1A, to prepare as literary material for publication or public presentation. You are preparing it uh, you're, you're changing it, working on it, making it better, making it worthy for publication or public pre presentation. And that is not at all what I do. Not that this is stupid watch. I need to put you on another mode. Um, not that this is literary in any sense, but uh, I don't prepare whatsoever, which is maybe not the best idea, but it is the most fun idea, especially when you just say whatever. Um, so this is not technically ready for public presentation, but that's what it is. It's out there. 1B, to assemble as a moving picture or tape recording by cutting and rearranging. Assemble it. You're like the little elf in the tree assembling your... Your cuttings and your rearranges, <laughs> you, though you, that's not a noun, your cuttings. Yes, and typically motion picture or tape recording, audio, video. Somehow, for some reason, that's what I started doing for my life. And uh, that's what I do. But, well, I guess, uh, is this a fine place? This, this episode probably has no editing. Uh, I try to do that as much as possible on this show because I just like the, just the weird realness of life coming at you and uh i like the i like to edit some some things but some things i'm like nah just just leave it raw leave it raw out on the table don't cut it and rearrange it i do sometimes have to cut out you know other things so that's why there's some some cuts you know burps you don't want those back to the words edit 1b to assemble we read that one 1c one to alter adapt or refine especially to bring about conformity to a standard or to suit a particular purpose. Change it for something. You're making it into what it should be, what it needs to be for a particular reason. Uh, was there an example? Carefully edited the speech. You definitely want your speech to be just perfect. Also is in edit a data file. This, the most generic thing that they could have put in there, which is accurate, you know, 
they're all of our digital files they're just data files and can you edit them a lot of them you can edit number two to direct the publication of as in edits the daily newspaper directing that you're saying this 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 is the direction the publication needs to go that's how i want it to go because i'm the editor and you got to listen to everything i say please and thank you let's go in that direction no wait where were the rest of the definitions um number three the synonym is delete and this is usually used with the word out edit out something that's get rid of it we don't want it three strikes you're out i uh, hope there's no editing in this episode editable is an adjective many things are editable but not when you're live not when you're live um <laughs> That uh, leads us to the very last word. We made it. It's the second form of edit, noun from 1955, an instance or result of editing. That is an edit there. Nope, not in this video, just all, all in the other, all the stuff. Okay, now it's time to pick a word of the episode, and I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. We had edged edge effect, edge grain, edge in, edger, edge tool, edge ways, edge wise, edging, edgy, f, the, e, d, i, e, d, that's definitely not how I want to say that word, ediacrine, I don't know, now I'm confusing everybody, edible, ed edict, edict, edification, edifice, edify, edit, and edit. Well, I don't think this episode was any more of a train wreck than it usually is. So that's good. Oh, boy. So, yeah, we got edit. I mean, that's my life. I mean, like, that, that's what I do. That's what I've been doing. Um, edible. Those are important. Put, put the two of them together. You might have yourself an interesting situation. I don't really know. It depends on you. Um, edgy? Edgy. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Edgy's kind of cool. I saw this crazy jacket in like a thrifty store place and i was like that thing's crazy and it would look look it would look great on me but i didn't buy it oh if i if i wore that that would be quite edgy quite edgy because nobody would expect that from me it's fun being edgy yeah everybody should be edgy beginning middle and end you know what? I'm going to tell you. No, I'm not, because this is all out of order, and we can't have anything out of order. We must have order. Okay, this is just a fun place to hear all the ramblings in my brain. Uh, I hope it's enjoyable to you and for you. This is the end of the episode. It wasn't actually that long. It's pretty close to accurate. Okay, I think I'm going to record another one, because it's a fun topic about empathy. Let's talk about that. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye.